Hello everyone, I am back. I hope you are too. I came up with something fun to do this time around. Well, I think it's fun. Maybe I have a weird idea of fun. I'm sure I do. I was thinking about book titles, especially as a writer. A book title is an interesting thing, I think, because it has to encapsulate the story in just a few words. Like, all writers are terrified of the synopsis, which is usually a couple of paragraphs encapsulating the story. But somehow book titles seem easier, even though it's just a few words. It's a weird phenomenon. <laughs> anyway, the book title can make a big difference. It needs to be catchy. It needs to sound good. The words need to sound good together, I mean. And it needs to catch the reader's eye and spark their imagination. And that, that's a lot to put into a few words. So much can hang on the title of the book. And that's why it can be hard as an author. It seems like either you come up with the title and then you have to come up with a story to go with it or the other way around. And that can be much harder. <laughs> I remember it took me two years to think of the title for a play I wrote. And then when I sent it into the publisher, one of the things they didn't like was the title because they thought the title was too obvious. <laughs> Obvious to everyone except the author, I guess. So as an author, it's it can be hard to come up with titles. And often you, you have a short list and you can go through several of them. So I thought it would be interesting to look at some of the original titles that authors came up with. And also, if your book gets translated into other languages, if you're so lucky, then the words that you have in the title don't always translate. Like, and sometimes other things in the stories don't translate, like character names and place names. But quite often, uh, titles will be changed as well. So I thought it would be fun to take a look at some popular titles and see what the original title ideas were and or some of the translated titles. So let's jump right in. Catcher in the Rye. I still haven't read it. I know I'm terrible. The title translates in Russian as over the abyss in the rye. Later translations made this a little more accurate as catcher in a grain field, but by then the public was more familiar with the original title, so there were a lot of complaints saying the title was wrong. It's just interesting how the original title that you're familiar with will inform your ideas of the story. Catch 22, Spanish, it's trap 22. So the phrase was coined by the novel title. We didn't have the phrase before, and then he just picked that. He actually wanted originally to call it Catch 18. Let me double check this. Catch 18 or Catch 11. But either of those were too similar to popular medias that were already out at the time. There was a movie, and I don't remember exactly. But it was too similar at the time, and he didn't want it to get mixed up, so he picked another number. Simple as that. Animal Farm. In French, this translates to animals everywhere. Orwell actually originally suggested, let me check my notes, Union des Républiques Socialistes Animaux, which would shorten to the acronym URSA, or bear. Clever. The Hobbit, as far as I can tell, largely survived a lot of translations. However, Sweden... Sweden changed it to the humpin. I'm maybe saying that wrong. Early translators, they changed the name of the hobbit species and also a bunch of other stuff in the books. Now, a lot of us know that Tolkien was very big on languages and he named these things the way he did for specific reasons and he was not very happy when he heard about this. So he created his own language guide to the species and other things of Middle Earth uh, purely because of this. Brave New World. I haven't read it. My God, how have I not read any of these? Ah, anyway, in French, it translates as the best of all worlds. Brave New World was an ironic line from the Shakespeare play The Tempest. And as such, it didn't translate well. So they changed it to another ironic quote. From philosopher, what's his name? Gottfried Leibniz. I'm presuming he's a little more popular in France than uh, Shakespeare was. The Great Gatsby. 
In Swedish, this translates as a man without scruples, which sounds pretty accurate. I haven't read it. Saw the uh, saw the movie, not the new movie. I saw the movie with Robert Redford um, when I was much younger. Oh, boy. I was... Never mind. Uh, so Fitzgerald originally, he had a long list, apparently. He considered calling the book uh, something like The High Bouncing Lover, which, which works, but... Eh, no, this is catchy. Um, also, Trimalchio, if I'm saying that right, in West Egg, which is also very descriptive, but kind of specific. Trimalchio is an ancient play from, let me check here. It is from the Satyricon by Petronius, and it's about a former slave who has come into money, and now he throws these opulent banquets full of um, just, what's the word? What's a word that means too much? Too much of everything. That's what it is. The girl with the dragon tattoo. Let's just go ahead and assume at this point that I have not ever read any books or seen any movies at all. Anyway, the original title in Swedish is Men Who Hate Women. This is not as catchy, but I am given to understand that it's possibly more accurate as to the... Um, what the story is really about. The Fault in Our Stars. No, no, not nothing. Macedonian. Macedonian? The title is The World is Not a Factory for Fulfilling Wishes. Also, maybe maybe not as short and snappy, but I like it. I like it. And yes, I, I also understand that it is apparently pretty accurate. Twilight the Series. No, never never read it. I did see the movie, and oh my gosh, that movie was about pine trees. Did you ever notice there are so many pine trees in that movie? I swear, there are more shots of pine trees than of people. The pine trees don't sparkle, though. It's a real shame. In French, the titles of the entire series are translated differently. They are Fascination, Temptation, Hesitation, and Revelation. Dramatic and... Uh, that's a little bit sexy. Wow. Um, animation is not part of it. That, that would be fun. Before I Fall is one I've never even heard of, so I'll have to look more into that. I'm always interested to learn about new titles, um, especially ones that are at least purported classics that I've never heard of. In German, this is a long one. Let me look. When you die, your entire life passes before your eyes, they say. Again, not as snappy, but that's, that's kind of cool sounding, isn't it? To Kill a Mockingbird. No, I'm sorry. I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. I know. I don't know how I missed this in school. They just, they never assign it. Not in any of my classes. I just, <laughs> never, never. I will. I will. I promise. I will. In French. <laughs> in French, it is called Don't Shoot at the Mockingbird. In German, it is called Who Disturbs a Nightingale, and that's presumably because Mockingbird didn't, the, the word didn't sound right. What was it, bristle or something? I don't speak German. I'm, I'm sure many German people will know, and they can tell me. Anyway, Harper Lee was originally just going to call it Atticus, which, I mean, yeah, sure, okay, but I, I, there are other characters, right? So, and I don't know, the... To Kill a Mockingbird sounds really... You want to know what it's about. 1984. I read it! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I read it! I actually read it in school, and I... Oh, what an ending. God, you just want to throw the book across the room. Anyway, George Orwell, Mr. Titles Man, um, he was originally going to call it The Last Man in Europe, which I find very interesting because isn't it not set in Europe? Guess maybe I have to reread it. Not that I really want to, because I remember the ending. Maybe I could just not read the last chapter. Pride and Prejudice. I don't actually know if I've read that. I've seen the the nineties version, the nineteen ninety five, ninety four, ninety five version, but I, ooh, I'll have to reread it if I've read it, and I'll have to read it if I haven't. In any case, she was originally going to call it First Impressions. Which, yes, yes, okay, makes sense, but I don't think that title would make a great huh, 
first impression. Yeah. Unlike me. Gone with the wind. I have seen it. Yay, go me. It was originally going to be called Tomorrow is Another Day. I kind of like it, but at the same time, I, you know, it doesn't necessarily conjure up so many questions, I think. Like Gone with the Wind, you're, you're going, what's Gone with the Wind? You know, you want to read and find out. The Sound and the Fury. The original title was going to be Twilight. <laughs> Can you imagine how confusing that would be? If you're a teenager and you're, you're hearing about all this for the first time, you want to go to the bookstore and see what everybody's talking about, and like, okay, yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, we're getting into the really interesting titles here, I think. Atlas Shrugged was going to be called The Strike. Haven't read it, haven't seen it, but The Strike? It's not real. Nah. Not really, no. Kind of dull. Of Mice and Men. Steinbeck was going to call that something that happened. Just anything, presumably. I mean, there are a lot of things that happen in the book, and there are a lot of things that happen outside the book. It, it's not very specific. I mean, Of Mice and Men... Does it really have anything to do with what's in the book? Well, that depends on your perspective, and maybe that's something to think about. So it's it's not bad in that case, but something that happened is, oh, it's pretty vague, isn't it? And the last one, this is my favorite. I have not read it. I've seen two versions. Dracula was going to be called The Dead Undead. <laughs> accurate, accurate, but... How confusing would that be for somebody who's new to all this vampire stuff? And, it, you know, Dracula was pretty early on the vampire front. People are just going to look at the title and go, huh? And not even bother picking it up. <laughs> okay, so that's all I've got for now. That is all I was able to find. I thought that was a pretty good list. If you know of any others, please put them in the comments because I would love to hear about them. Even if you've got some discarded titles of your own work that you're not too, you know, not too afraid to show, then please, please let us know. Let us know. Anyway, I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of fun going through this. Maybe too much fun. Maybe I need to get out more. But for right now, I'm going to concentrate on my YouTube videos. So I will see you all next week. Bye.